You know, pioneers first passed through this valley on horseback or covered wagon or even on foot. Then when people decided to stop and set up shop, well, they needed a better way to get goods and themselves in and out of here. We'd lean on the locomotive for that. Boiseans had wanted a Union Pacific mainline route for a long time, but there was a difficult grade which made it hard for a passenger train to actually get into the city. We call it the Boise Bench. Well, once technology caught up, the city actually built its first train depot not far from the original location. And it was on this day back in 1925, well, that one, the one of the most iconic landmarks in Boise, opened to quite fanfare in Idaho's capital city. When you think of Boise, you think of a couple of different iconic structures that we have here. One is the Gene Harris Band Shell located in Julia Davis Park, and the other is the depot. Yeah, the Boise Depot is an iconic symbol of Boise. Iconic for sure. Obvious might be the way most see it. Just Google Boise and click the images tab. The view that we have from the top of the depot is probably the most picturesque view in the entire city and arguably is probably the most picture taken location in the entire city. While trains have been rolling through Boise since the late 1880s, they haven't always had a 96 foot tower as a target. We technically had like three depot locations. The very first was a, a wood framed building that was up here on the bench, um, not quite in the same location, but close. And then we had a downtown depot that was made of sandstone. And then this one was built in 1925. Brandy Burns, who has a handle on the history of Boise. April 16, 1925, they held the opening day dedication. Says the city held parades with live bands and costume parties to celebrate the opening. By having this mainline train service here, it really helped connect Boise to Salt Lake and Seattle and Portland and all of these other main urban centers in the West. They don't make them like this anymore. The Spanish-style architecture is what sets the Boise Depot apart from the rest of the city. A distinction, Thad Webster, Tour Guide, City Parks and Rec, Boise Depot, has had the privilege of describing for the last four years. Obviously, the main part of the whole building is the passenger terminal. Guiding guests through the nearly 100-year history of the depot. Incoming traffic would enter from the street, turn up this aisle, go to the ticket office, and then they'd head down to get a newspaper or cigar of their choice. While there may have been much needed upgrades to the building, much has remained. There are antique railroad cars painted across each of the timbers. Unchanged. All of that's original, 1925. Timbers, chandeliers, and the air conditioning system, ceiling fans. The ceiling is one of those that needed a touch up which they did during an early 1990s renovation. When they looked up, they didn't see any painted ceiling. They saw black, total black. And that was from the coal-based furnace in the basement for the last 85 years. So they just went up there to dust it. And it was then that they figured out, oh no, we need to restore it because it's actually painted. They also added an elevator to the tower. Originally, that tower had stairs in it so that the clock worker could get up to work on the clock. The clock, by the way, still operates with the original mechanism and chimes three times a day. The building hasn't been the only thing that's changed over the years. After the depot was completed in 1925, the city of Boise decided to redo the route to it, starting with changing the street name from 7th to Capitol Boulevard. They had a grand vision of how Capitol Boulevard would be the entrance to the city of Boise. They really envisioned this clear view shed from the depot to the Capitol, um, which you can still see some of that today. It's been more than two decades since the last passenger train passed through the Boise Depot, but that hasn't changed how it still stands as the stoic staple of the city of trees. It's historical, it adds a lot of character to the city of Boise, and it really is a destination place that when you come to Boise, you want to visit the depot. Well, two years after the depot opened in 1927, the Platt Gardens, located just a few steps from the depot, they were completed. Named after Howard Platt, who was the manager of the Oregon Short Line Railroad at the time. And then behind the depot, if you've been up there, you've probably seen Big Mike. 
It's a locomotive. It ran on the Union Pacific Line from Council Bluffs, Iowa to Oregon and back. In 1955, Big Mike retired and was donated to the city. For nearly 60 years, he sat at the entrance to the Julia Davis Park. But in December of 2007, the city decided to move him back to his original home. That would be on the train tracks behind the depot. How did the name Big Mike well, come to be Big Mike. Mike was the name given by the engineers, by the way. It's a shortened version of Mikado, which is the name of the class of engines by the manufacturer. Mikado is also the Japanese word for emperor. Turns out Japan was the manufacturers, or one of them, one of the largest customers.